back to Linda's Pantry. So today I'm going to bring you along for a no-knead bread. And this bread comes out like an artisan bakery loaf. It's so delicious and so easy. And I was making this for a friend for a housewarming gift and some homemade jam. And I decided that uh, I should probably go ahead and show you how to do it. There's a ton of videos out there. This recipe is all over the place, but it's super simple. And if you haven't seen it, I hope you enjoy this video. So let's get started. Can't be easier. And this is three cups of flour. You're gonna uh, want only a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast, believe it or not. And I have changed the recipe just a little bit for our liking. I've got two teaspoons of Himalayan pink salt that I've pre-ground. And three cups of flour, quarter teaspoon of yeast. And I'm going to go ahead with a teaspoon of red wine vinegar. What? It's gonna give it a really good flavor, but it's also gonna make this dough just a, a little bit, I don't know, I guess it would, uh, it's gonna taste better if you do it the quick method. And what I mean by that is the quick method is not letting it sit for 18 to 24 hours. And I've already gotten a batch of dough ready for you because this is the dough that's going for the gift. And it has been sitting for almost 24 hours, about 20 hours. And you can put this in the refrigerator. Makes it a little easier to work with. Uh, but so you just want to mix this up. And then we're going to add hot water. And it's usually about a cup and a half, but it depends on the humidity and the air and everything else. So you're going to go ahead. And this is warm to the touch. If you were going to do a really slow proof, you can add cold water and keep this in the refrigerator. Um, this dough can be kept in the refrigerator for a couple of weeks. And you want a really loose kind of a shaggy dough. So, so you've got that really kind of a sticky dough. Now we're just going to cover this and leave it at room temperature. You don't necessarily need it in a warm place, but or, like I said, you could put it in the refrigerator. So just for messy sake, I'm going to do this. I'm going to turn this dough out on parchment. You could do it on your counter as well. But this will make for easy cleanup. So you want a heavily floured board wherever you're going to put your dough out. And make sure that your hands are also just as floured because you're going to need it. And then we're just going to go ahead and see how loose and bubbly this dough is very stringy kind of uh, dough. And all that means is those gluten strands are just well developed. And make sure you stay on the floured surface or you're going to regret it. <laughs> yep. So. As your dough spreads out, and you can take a bench scraper. I just don't happen to have one, and I actually looked for one the other day because I really need one, and I couldn't find it. Couldn't find one. I used to have one, but I think my husband used it for doing something in the garage. So then go ahead and get your flour down, and you're just going to go ahead and fold that dough. You're not really kneading it. You're just working the dough a little bit to get it ready to go into your Dutch oven. And you can use a cast iron Dutch oven. You, any heavy Dutch oven that you might have is going to work. The bench scraper really works nice for this. And see how nice and loose that dough is? That's what you want. OK, I think we've worked enough. Now we're going to let it do a second proofing. And I've got my little oval Dutch oven. This is a, a three-quart Dutch oven. And it works great for this. It gives it a really pretty loaf, if you will. And we're just going to go ahead and carefully pick up your dough and put it right down in there. And we're going to let this rise. So it's going to get its second rise. And once it comes up to where we're ready to bake this off, oh, it's, 
going to be delicious. I'll bring you back and show you what we've got. But it's only about a third of the way up, so we've got plenty of room to rise. All right, guys, I'll be back. So my timer has gone off, and it's time to take the lid off. Oh, it looks so pretty. And I'm going to go ahead, because I don't see my slits, I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple more just like that so they can go ahead and split open and we're going to pop this back in the oven. I'm going to turn the oven up to 400 degrees and we're going to give it another 15 to 30 minutes. All right guys. So guys I've got my bread here and I've already cut off a slice and uh, got that end cut off. It's super crispy and it's delicious. I'm just going to tell you and the center pieces here, oh, they're, it's chewy and delicious on the inside. And I know because I've tasted, oh look at, look at that crumb. It's beautiful, big air holes. It's just a, a nice chewy bread. So you can have this with butter, but I'm telling you, it's just as good without. So here goes. Mm. so good. It is absolutely delicious. I certainly hope this inspires you to go ahead, try making your own artisan noni bread and impress your family and friends and be sure and share because it's wonderful. All right guys, see you next time. Hit subscribe if you're not a subscriber, check out all the links and share it on your Facebook page. Bye.